What is good? We're back and we have some must buys, moves to make, buy lows, buy before it's too late. Burr, 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 burr. Is there a weather machine? <laughs> Find out today on the FF. No, you will not. <laughs> All right. So we got some 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 fun stabs for you, and they all they all had a, a nice week this week. So I felt like it was a good week to talk about some of the lower end players that could really make a difference for you long term. Because not, at the end of the day, we are playing Dynasty, um, and some of, some of the some of my favorites, Big Co's favorites, uh, di- did well this week, and everybody's talking about him so let's let's uh take a go at him let's start with josh downs and josh now he's downs. he's gonna be the highest level of uh Value. super saiyan we're gonna hit today which is a <laughs> dragon ball z reference and you're scoring at home um <laughs> that show never ended it was, it was it, good it or was start good. it never started it was a guy nobody ever knows where did it start where did it end? a lot of fajitas all right downs so we got an interesting here. We got an interesting player here, right? Because we have the tale of Anthony Richardson, right? And we're we're gonna get a long run of Anthony Richardson here at some point. It might not be next week, mm-hmm. but we saw Flacco's over the, playing him out of a job over the last two weeks. You know how efficient and how good Downs can be, which is is great for Anthony Richardson moving forward to have Pittman and Downs, and then you got a a, a guy in Pierce who you could take your deep shots with, as well as Ad Mitchell, who's uh, by a bunch of different metrics playing well, separating well, right. uh, just not, not, not quite putting it all together, whether some on him, some on, on the quarterback. Right. But Downs comes out here and in three games has a 27.4% target share. His yards per route run are 2.37, which is 21st. First read target percentage is 35. That's sixth. His first downs per route run, 0.151, which is sixth. 0.20 missed tackles force per reception, uh, and that's 29th. So he's coming out here, putting up some big time numbers, some big boy numbers. Kind of the point of this episode is there's obviously a market always on all there these guys because that's how this works. Now right? we're talking. So there's, you know, there's always somebody buying and somebody selling. So somebody wants to sell Josh Downs because they're worried about Anthony Richardson and he had two games. So they're willing to sell. Maybe you wait a game, see if you can get the price down a little bit. But I don't think any of these guys' price is going to get too high. We're, you know, Josh Downs, is this a, you know, is this somebody I, I wouldn't say that you're buying low per se on Josh Downs, but I think in general you could be buying lower than where Josh Downs can ascend to at this point. And that's going to be kind of the point of what we're doing in this episode and what we're doing in fantasy. Like typically I'm buying a dip Yeah. right now. You know, you could say all these guys are sells because they just had, you know, a, a good weekend and they they've overperformed their uh, draft capital and, and sell them, which if that's the way you want to play, I don't I mean, I mean problems with that. I'm, I'm a bit more of a long-term patience. I want to buy guys that I trust and believe in. Downs is one of those guys. Yep. Give up a two for Josh Downs all day? I don't see why not, right? Jacoby. Give a two for Josh Downs? Yeah. yeah. Oh, easily. Jacoby in a third for sure. Yep. What are your thoughts on Josh Downs moving forward? Well, everything out of Colts camp said that he was basically Anthony Richardson's number one anyway. Mm-hmm. That's your gamble here because obviously it's easy from the outside. We're, lo- we're on the outside looking in. Your first gut would say... You know, when Anthony Richardson comes back, he's not going to be delivering the ball to the, you know, volume that Joe Flacco has. And, you know, Anthony Richardson probably won't because he can't help himself. He's going to throw it 50 yards downfield and probably take some catches and attempts off the, uh, you know, some his attempts and catches away uh, from the receivers. But still, Josh Downs only getting a 61% snap share to put up those types of numbers against Jacksonville. With Joe Flacco in there, doesn't really surprise me. But to put up the 22 points against Pittsburgh was pretty solid against that defense. Um, yeah, and, and real quick to, in, to to interject, like we're giving Flacco all the flowers, and he did a great job with Cleveland, and he's come in and he's done a great job with Colts, the Colts here. But I mean, is he elite? What, what's unfortunate is what's <laughs> unfortunate sure. is is Acid that tags. there was two great drives with the Steelers with Anthony Richardson in there, exactly. and he could have came in and and really I could have. Right at the ship for some people mm-hmm. and the Anthony Richardson category, and he gets he's getting absolutely no credit for what he was doing and, and potentially put it. And we don't know how that game would end, of course not. But it did look good to start. But with. it looked really good to start with. Downs was semi involved before mm-hmm. he got in there. Then then Flacco comes and throws a touchdown to him. Flacco's played 185 fucking games. Like this yeah. is what he's supposed to be able to do right now. Yeah, he's just. I mean, he's the definition of a savvy veteran. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's a former champ and 
MVP, Super Bowl champion. There you go. Elite. All the elite. <laughs> Flacco elite. Um, right, so the gamble you have with, with like, basically right this second, based on any history of Josh Downs, this is a buy high moment, you know, or sell high moment for you. But I think what you're saying is if you sell high, you're really gambling. The gamble is if Richardson comes back, it could go down a little bit. But if Richardson comes back and it doesn't go down a little bit, then you, you know, you, you and, and if Richardson comes back and evolves, right. And if Richardson comes back and it stay, even if it stays, I mean, it doesn't even have to stay the same. If it just comes, if, if it goes down just a little bit, I mean, eight for 82 and nine for 69. And I mean, one of those would have touched down. I mean, those are, those are ridiculous. If I mean, 22 points and six and 16 points. I mean, it doesn't even Richardson could come back and it go down to 14 or 15 points a game. That's still going to be a, a top 24 wide receiver all day long. Yeah. You know, I think the and, trades that he was showing the value still not even close to as far up as I, th- I thought it might be. I, and I, I think agree. people are scared of Anthony Richardson. So I think it leaves a window and some people will be wanting to sell high. So it's a, it's a person of interest for me. Yeah, I agree. I, I got somebody offered me two thirds for downs last week before if, after the first week against Pittsburgh. And I said, I'm politely going to have to say no to that. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm big on downs and I'm I'm going to be a little higher on him than most so he's going to be I don't I literally said to this guy cuz I don't want to be I said I'm not that my all my guys are better than yours kind of guy. Mm-hmm. That's not how I do my trade. All my guys on my team are not better than all the guys on your team. That's not how I trade. But, you know, you don't if you come over here and ask him for my Josh Downs who's been on my bench and he just has one game, I it's you know, it just doesn't sound correct almost. It sounds weird to say I love this guy. Yeah. You know, but like I do really, really like this guy. And so like your two thirds are like doing like like him or that like that's okay. those two thirds did nothing for me when I'm looking at Josh. Right. Downs. Yeah. It you doesn't know? even there's plenty of guys on my bench that those two thirds would I would start. I, it might move yeah. over those two thirds. Yeah, we'd, get the ju- we'd get the juices flowing and be like a little bit of mango for Costanza. There was getting, no juice flowing. Getting things on that. Yeah. On that. Those two thirds. No. Josh Downs. It's cold outside. So and nor would there be any juice flowing if he sent me a two. Right. You know? So, you know, you pulled up some trades. They, they were all yeses. We're saying, you know, go. maybe not all. There's a lot of like higher value things in here that, you know, I just don't, don't have the time to evaluate right. with like quarterbacks being traded. But, yeah. you know, would you trade the 26 first for downs in a 26 second and third? You know, you're probably not. It's probably getting a little rich for me right now. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't two three and down. I'm keeping for a twenty six first. I'm keeping a first uninvolved in the downs trade. Agreed. I'm gonna try to pepper. Uh, that's a that's a big co special right there. L- leave the first out and add more on the back end if you have to to get it figured out. I'm I'm a little tighter with my first round picks these days because of the talent coming out of college every year. Mm-hmm. Aaron and, Rodgers and, and the and if not necessarily if the talent would even work out on my team, it's for the rookie fever that that first round pick would be way more valuable in a couple months. Yeah. That's I just I've been around the block enough well, times. Year down the line. It, it, so you I mean if if Josh that, Downs yeah. comes out and every week is like those last oh, two weeks sure. then it's not then, even a question. I don't I don't think that's too far out of the realm of saying hey a first for Downs a two and a three it's not is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple I'm, of years. I'm six it's a couple of years out so. That's true. And you know, and obviously, yeah. it's sub. It's all team dependent. I'm not going to yeah. do that on my terrible team. I might do right. that on my awesome right. team. Right. You know, if I got a really good team, been a yeah. competitor for a while, you know, I, I, I can see that. One going quarterback down. now is a whole other. I got a really good team in one quarterback. Maybe I'm giving you my first two years from now for Josh Downs, and I get Downs in a two and a three. Sure, you know. But you if know, it's super flex, it, you know, now you're adding a, now, especially 2026. I don't want to take any. That hats. was one QB. I don't want to take any hats out of the Arch Manning ra- race. <laughs> definitely you know? one QB. So definitely somebody that I'm trying to. One QB definitely more likely to send 100%. the first. Downs would be somebody that I'm trying to go trade one of my olds and mm-hmm. and get you know and get Josh Downs from somebody. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to go trade you know an old running back or an, and I'm 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 a middling team. I'm an okay team. I might be selling for undervalue, but Perfect. you're not you're not going to be able to get the the elite elite player for your old Devontae no. Adams or whoever you're you know going to sell. Yeah. But like Josh Downs and then see if I can grab just a little bit more if i could but like i'm okay with making a move like that with like a you know a 30 year old veteran at this point if, That's I'm, a good if i got point. no yeah it's be- if, if i got a pretty bad team and i got Devonte adams i'd probably easily give him away for josh downs at this point that being said Devonte adams about to be traded next week if he's a chief his value would be higher. Sure. So you need to pay attention to that situation. Right. But just just in general that'd be kind of a, a play for there. So Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel 
Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. All right, let's uh, let's take it over to let's go running back. Let's go All running right. back. We'll go we'll go Tank Bigsby. Tank Bigsby, uh, one of our favorites from last year in that late second third spot there. Not because we hated ETN, because we liked or I liked Tank Bigsby. I don't I don't you know you're you're a I don't know what why you were into it, but you loved it just mostly for potential coach talk opportunity. I think was probably more your <laughs> flavor there, not so much the player, but the what they were saying about what could be over there and the opportunity. I liked Tank Bixby because he was a mid mid second round draft pick and mm-hmm. and what I could potentially get. You were big on the running back himself, so I put value and put weight into your opinion on the player and the fact that this player wasn't I didn't have to take him at one seven in a draft. I could take him at between two three and two eight. And and that was anytime I get a running back that you like in the second round of a rookie draft, I'll I'll be interested in that player. And and he came into and you could get him in the thirds in superflex, right? Exactly. Yeah, that, those that was you know some one quarterback league stuff that I was looking into. Got him in like two of our home leagues and and one quarterback home leagues and stuff like that. And so you know here comes Tank Bigsby basically reviving himself from where he ended up last year which was on the bottom of your bench and some you know with dust on him so you have a complete 180 from borderline droppable short bench leagues right to here the theme of the episode here is right right so it's hard for me to say i'm gonna go buy tank bigsby right a second i got him on a lot of my teams even into super flex leagues because he was going so late i got i got him i got a lot of tank bigsby so for me who whenever a player like you said you had a lot of Kyron Williams so this would be an interesting conversation for you we had a handful of Isaiah Spillers together Mm. you had a lot of Kyron Williams in that first year you dealt with what we just dealt with with Tank Bixby this year Mm -hmm. the off season of having a a, now you didn't have to pay as much you had a third and fourth round Kyron Williams I have a handful of mid second round draft pick to Kyron Williams that was feeling pretty terrible when there was like a Rasheed Rice to be drafted Mm -hmm. you know that's where it really stings. So now that he's not dead and also making plays out there and looking good, so there's definitely some positions where I can see selling him and taking the spot where on a team that needs more than he could help you with anyway, Yeah, getting out of it and getting something. And, uh, and you know, this, and it's, it's, a, it's a loaded gun tank yeah. makes me. For me, this is... If I can get, um, this isn't going to be a one for one Bigsby trade. This is going to be if I can get value tacking him on into a trade, yeah, in something, then then he might to be, make something good to happen. make something good happen. Yeah. Other than that, he's staying on my team right now. He's he's first in yards after contact per attempt, five point eight two. His explosive yards percentage, so yards coming off explosive runs, are seventy five point eight percent. If you watched the last ranking episodes, you heard already this stat, but Tanks Bigsby, all the other guys on this outside of Kenny Walker have 16 attempts, 11 attempts, and then you got Kenny and Bigsby here, 34 and 37 attempts, explosive run percentage. Bigsby's a good bit ahead of Kenny Walker here at 17.6%, mm-hmm. right? So there's a lot of explosive kind of run stuff happening here. Now, he is the second guy coming in off the bench. I feel like and I've never proven this out, and I'd love to talk to an NFL player one, but like when that guy's the second guy coming off the bench, it feels like you take a sigh of fucking relief that the other guy's out of there and you stop watching it so fucking intently. This was our Tony Pollard. We've seen this a million times. For years, and yes. everybody always wants this other guy so mm-hmm. bad. And it works out sometimes, but not a lot of more than fifty percent time does not work out <laughs> once he's the once he's the main guy. That being said, I think ETN's down the road next year. That's what really makes us. If, if, if ETN and they, he was crushing and they for sure were going to sign him and the Jaguars were going in the right direction and everything was going well, and they're like, hey, we're not going to stir the pot. We're going to keep Trevor and ETN together. Yeah. I wouldn't be nearly as bullish on keeping Tank Bigsby. I, I think homeboy's gone, the coach, after this year, which mm-hmm. is not great for Tank's Bigsby because maybe they just bring somebody completely different in on the running back front. But he's showing that he can be good. He's always been a pretty good runner. He had some fumbling concerns. He almost fumbled the touchdown that he scored this week. It was, he's barely hanging on to it. Uh, he might've even actually he fumbled, fumbled it. it, and the got Jags it back. Record. Yeah. He got it back. Right. So for me, this is the epitome of the guy that I'm having patience with and just keep it. And I'll take the loss if it, if I lose, but I also wasn't willing to pay. Like 
I, I'll draft the shit out of Tank Bigsby at 3-3 or, you know, three. I wasn't going to draft him before Rashi Rice. So mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not in the, that position. So I don't have that attachment of like, if I could cash out for the two right now, I would. I'm, you know, the only place I might have him, I might have paid 212 for him with you somewhere mm-hmm. where we have Tank Bigsby. Like, and, you know, semantics of four picks or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, you're saying, you know, you might have even taken them a little earlier. So, so I get cash it. out four two right now? No, I'm saying like if I was in what, what kind of the scenario that Big Co was paying, I would feel a lot more pressure to say, all right, well, hey, we could we could turn this. I felt bad about this for a while. Yeah. And a lot of people are going to play it that way. And, I, you know, I don't again, I don't, I'm not going to begrudge you for taking the upswing here. But I, I for me, it's worth hanging on to for the things that it could turn into. I, to me, fantasy football is one with outliers. Yeah, and I'm not saying that Tank Bigsby is necessarily some huge outlier, but like, like every edge that that I can get is is typically comes from somebody that I I studied, I had patience with, and I feel comfortable with. And Tank Bigsby is one of those guys, so I'm I'm just gonna do that. Sure, uh, but I understand where a lot you know where you're coming from. Yeah, I mean, I didn't empty clip on Bigsby over Rasheed Rice. There, I mean, I, but I did. There was right. there's definitely one league. Saying. There's one league in particular where I did take him over Rasheed Rice. And maybe two, the two home leagues, because it was later in the year and he had already had preseason action, which that's when it always gets you. The running backs in preseason will get you every time, and Tank did that. <laughs> Earlier in the offseason, times, you know, in the, in the FFPC early rookie drafts, I had I took Rasheed Rice where I was supposed to take Rasheed Rice and left Bigsby on the board. The later the later ones, when when Bigsby was in there chopping it up in week one or two of the preseason, then we had those late rookie drafts. That's Those are the ones that will get you in trouble. Yeah, And, and I did, I, and, and I put Bigsby on those teams. And uh, and it felt bad. And so now it doesn't feel as bad. And so I would be, you know, I'm not itching to go sell him for a two, but, of, of you know, a potential high end two, I, I might look into a re-roll here and there as, as necessary. But like putting him in a package to make something bigger happen is probably the, the yeah. move that you said. And, and that's I, probably and the right move. Right. I think if I'm selling, that's the way I'm going. And if like, I think I'd be going the opposite way with the buying. Like I'm when I'm putting a package together, I might try to get Tank Bigsby and like, Basically, when you're building a bigger deal, can I get this guy to kind of like almost the way he's valuing and the way we've built this deal, like essentially almost the way he's valuing in the package is like he's like a third plus in the package because we've built some other things and he's got his eye on the prize over here. Can I can I, you know, siphon right. a little bit of, hey, you know, going the opposite way of when I'd be trying to buy Tank Bigsby where where he's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to get this deal done and I'll, he just wants Tank Bigsby. And uh, yeah, I hate to lose him, but I'm not going to blow the deal over it. And so, yeah. you know, you, he doesn't have the high value. He does not like, oh, give me the two back to get Tank Bigsby. He's like, oh, yeah, I mean, hey, you toss this guy in there and give me a three, four and, and you got it. Yeah. You know yep. what I mean? So that, that's kind of the way I would play Tank Bigsby and, and a lot of these guys. So, all right, let's keep it moving. Did you got, do you have some trades there? Plenty of twos given up for Tank. Yeah. That seems about where we're at. Yeah. Jerome Ford in the I'd, third. I'd probably hold for that for a lot of that. I know people would immediately say you're an idiot and take it. Uh, but that's, you know, I, I, I play with some patience and, and that I've put the time in to know these guys and I'm wrong a plenty. But Would you well, give up the one and get a two back for Tank? No, no. Devin Singletary, Mark Andrews for Tank? Oof. Tank Dell, maybe. <laughs> nah, I made sure to type it in right. So. A two for Tank and a fourth. Give back a fourth. Squeeze that fourth out of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I would say don't do the two, but, man... Yeah, if ETN, which he does have a fifth year option that I don't know if they picked up or not. No, he, he I don't he's not coming back. I mean he was drafted in the first round. Yeah, I just I don't I don't think they're which, think. Yeah, that first year he missed, so I don't know if they picked up I would assume they picked it up, but I don't think so. I I, I can't imagine that he's coming back. Then you gotta go buy Tank Dell for uh, more than it. But team. that's that's my assumption, so who knows? All right, let's keep it moving. Let's go. Um, let's go, Jordan Whittington. I want to. I want to hit him up. We were hot and heavy on him at the end of this end of the summer. Any any rookie draft that I had. I'm not going to say that I did a whole lot of studying on Whittington. Right there's your preseason darling. But right there's there. a preseason darling, uh-huh. and it was. And the Rams have had success with this. So every draft and conversation we had late, a lot of Whittington talk. I have Whittington in every draft that I did late. I made sure to exactly. trade in and move around and and do what I and that that's what I'm. And that, this so is what I'm talking about when I when I've figure it out and this is what I, I take my shots on the guys yeah and that's that's always what I'm talking about I'm gonna do my research I'm gonna figure out why and then I'm gonna go ahead and take my shots 
on a, a few select guys. And that's, you know, that's what I'm going to do with those third and fourth round picks. Right. And the reason is like, it's not hard to get to that point where Puka is obviously a stud, but like you said, they had success with that type of player and they've, they've had success over and over and over in the late rounds of the draft. So, you know, they can do it. They did it with Puka the year before and Cooper cups, super old. And Demarcus Robinson is a journeyman who looked good to end last year. And right. he's 29. Yeah. So like if Whittington is looking like that in the preseason and the coach is talking him up, we've already seen we we've, we've not that he's going to be Puka, but we've already we had already seen that yeah, I mean, same thing happen for the system, Rams wide receiver system, wide receiver system. Uh, Bo, he's just came in the last two like in the last. So he's 16th in yak per reception, 7.56, uh, 24th and first downs per route run. He's leading the wide receivers in target share for the Rams uh, since week three, which obviously that's when Cooper Cup went down. Yep or week two maybe or whatever it was when he went down 21 percent um his yards per route run 2.27 uh, that's weeks three through five and then you could even sort that down to four through five when he really gets the role of what's going on there mm -hmm. in the last two weeks he's been he's been solid i think he had 10 targets this week right and now he did exit the game I'm, i don't know exactly what that injury is but cooper cup has been injured a, a decent amount and he's 31 and exactly puka nakua is out there and they've they've had success with him he, he's been injured and we haven't seen him we don't know when we're going to see him he's somebody that i'm interested in buying into like tutu atwell we we gave to you a few weeks ago when we were really diving into the numbers in week three and tutu's been great sure um, and they, they've got some capital invested in tutu but i think you know moving forward this wide receiver core could be whittington puka and tutu right well and and, and i just you know it might not be for this whole year where whittington's doing his thing uh, but I just when you slotted him into a role, he came out and performed uh, and he looks and when when you put these numbers that are on the, the fantasy data point sheet and you watch the performance and you see the usage that, that the team's giving him when all those things come together, I'm I'm not selling Whittington like that's I'm, that's a strong hold. And I'm, I'm going to send two threes for Whittington and I'll mm -hmm. just let him chill on my bench. You know what I mean? I don't know if that would get him done, but there's a there's lot of one, people yeah, out there. Someone got him for one three. There's two threes. There's, there's a two and a three. There's a whole side of fan, fantasy, dynasty fantasy football right now that are telling you to just take the three for Whittington right now. Yeah, and you should be the go giving it. Right. You should, like you said, I mean, this week, dude, we're we're in week five, and we got played the guys shit out of Whittington everywhere. Everywhere <laughs> we got guys missing it. We got. I mean, you could yeah. take you could take the. He could take half of the first three rounds of your draft this year, and uh, all those guys are hurt. Yeah. You know? So Whittington comes out and gets seven for 89. This last week he had six for 60, so that was just showing you enough. This week he has 10 targets, gets seven for 89, so there's 15. That's 16 points. Yeah. You know? And we had him in a bunch of our lineups because injuries are everywhere. Right. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm buying Whittington for any third – I'll, I'll spend again, two threes. Here, this is this is deep dynasty talk, but like it's dynasty. If it's deep when, dynasty talk until it ain't until he's fucking playing this uh, week, because you need I, him. You I know, know I, I mean? yeah, for sure, I know. But I'm saying no, like, I, right? I, I agree with you. He, he, I just said he was in a lot of our lineups. Uh, he yeah, got 16 uh, points. Like in two weeks from now, Cooper Cup and Puka could be back on the field, mm -hmm. and Demarcus Robinson and Tutu, they're there. Their journey, I mean, Tutu's been there, but, you know, like, they're, they're veterans. Whittington probably won't dominate, dominate their snap percentage. It'd probably be a mix of all three. He may lead it, but he's not going to completely wipe them off the team Yeah. if Cooper Cup and Puka are there in two weeks. Right. But, like, I don't think McVay's going anywhere. We've already kind of weathered that storm. Yeah. You know, it seemed like he was kind of out two years ago. He's kind of back in. Maybe Stafford sticks around. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe Stafford gets traded for a deadline. Who knows? But I feel like... If you can give a three for Whittington right now, I think that's a smart play. And I think turning down the three when it comes in, and if you have Whittington, is a smart play mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and look, a lot of these plays aren't necessarily going to be to win you the championship this year, but these are future plays of players that I'm seeing do work right. that I really like kind of moving forward, and it's okay to moves be... moves to make right now. Yeah. Right, to be, to be in front of things. And you could say, hey, wait until those guys are back on the field and people are forgetting about Whittington, and, and people have short memories. So maybe mm -hmm. that could be the play. But I'm just saying right now, if I can go get him for a third and secure it, I'll do it Done. And, and I'll put them on the team because everybody just thinks you play this game and everybody talks that only about the top guys and that, that, that they're the only ones that matter. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. I plugged Whittington in every fucking league that I had him in this and week. And downs and, together. And, I'm right, looking at and, a lineup right now. And it was awesome. It mm -hmm. was fantastic. And you need these kind of pieces, especially if you're playing in anything more than just like two running backs, exactly. a flex, 
and you know two wide receivers. When all of a sudden you got three flexes in there, mm-hmm. or Four? three wide receivers Jeez. and yeah. two flexes, you know, however you're doing it, like it it gets really thin, real thin, quick. really quick. And look, if it's FFPC, well, fuck that. I got Jordan Whittington in lineups in FFPC too. So That's even short bench, he's in the, he's um, on the team. So you know, I I know that nobody loves talking about it and everybody poo poos the guy who aren't all the top 10 guys but guess what you can't unless you're absolutely running rough shot on the league you ain't got a bench full of top 10 guys you know <laughs> right you need guys like this to get you through the season so you can be in contention at times when you need to be in contention and the cheaper you can get these guys the better to help you get through the season and now you might get into a jam where uh, cup and puka are back and you can't play winnington now all right, I'll take that for a, you know, then Cooper Cup's hurt, what, two weeks later, maybe? Right, I'm, you know? I'm prepared for that. So. I'm prepared to weather that storm. All right, there's Whittington. Uh, let's Travis Etienne, does, they did pick up his fifth-year option. Okay, all right. So stock down tank, Bigsby. Oh, Thanks. Etienne's here next year for sure? Well, unless they trade him, but they did. Oof. You have to pick it up the year before. So right, mm-hmm. right. They picked him and Trevor I didn't up. think they did. <clears throat> I didn't think they did. Google, right. I mean. Could be wrong. Google so, it. I didn't duck, duck, go it, so. Uh, they did say they're. <laughs> Maybe, maybe maybe the maybe libs trading. are giving me what, what they maybe. want me to hear on Google, but maybe trading them. But still, Tank Dell maybe still trade. very invested. Um, Easily in, tradable. Uh, what ET what Tank doesn't want to leave Trevor. That's going on. So uh, let's keep it moving. Go Tigers. We touched on Tracy for a second. Tyrone Tracy had a really good game this week. Everybody's talking about him. Everyone loves him. Tyrone um, Tracy. Yeah. Junior. Isn't there a junior in there? There, is a, so. there is a junior, I think. Well, Sleeper's liberal it. with the juniors. Yeah. Um, and the thirds. But, was out there looking really, really strong. You know, again, I, I don't know exactly what to do with Tyrone Tracy at the moment. You know, it's a hold for me. I don't know if you want to go buy Tyrone Tracy right now. You probably could wait a minute, get Singletary back in the mix. They love Devin Singletary and kind of see what's going on. And any place that I had Devin Singletary, I made sure I bought Tracy because I felt like the package would be more appealing mm-hmm. when you want to sell them. And it was exactly for this sort of reason here. I think Tyrone Tracy's really interesting, right? He looked he looked the part out there and he's he's got people really excited. Would you, you know, obviously the the hype got a little crazy in, you know, midway through the off season, but he was real cheap for a while. Is he is he a candidate for a quick turnaround for for selling or are you riding the the hype with Tracy here for the the long shot for the Giants here? Really torn here. It's this whole coaching staff could be turned over. The Giants say they want to not turn their coach over quickly because the, like they did the last couple coaches, they want to have a little bit of continuity here. Dude's 25 years old, but he he's a wide receiver turned running back. Yep. And to come in Way here up. To, to come in here and, and, and knock out 130 yards on the ground is uh, without like an 80 yard, you know, fluke play is pretty solid. Wait, um, so you can't take away the big plays. Not Neat. that, not that you can take it away, but like if you got, <laughs> if you jerk. got twenty five, the red, the next, the rest, the yeah. other if three and a half the quarters. Plays. It looked, it looked good out there. Yeah. So, and he didn't even really get involved in the passing game all that much. It would be exactly. It would obviously be team, team by team basis, but still, I, I and mean, it seemed like you might have got Gray out of the way a little bit. You know. Yeah. I, I mean, a performance like this, you move Gray right over. Like yeah. I, I don't. He was think, a thorn in the side of this yeah. movement. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think for me, I, I was a. I'm gonna take a chance on an explosive runner who can catch. Yeah, and so I, I would probably rather hold for the high upside potential, and potential probably potential gets you fired, right? That's that's the potential gets you fired for head co- head coaches will tell you that. That's one of their favorite things to say. Yeah, potential gets you fired. I got to play the guys that can play right now. So that's why you see some lack of development sometimes out of the old school hard. You know, yeah, I'm gonna hang on to Tyrone Tracy for the most part. If the right deal comes along, he's obviously a really good. Uh, if that's what if was it the takes, status quo out there for Tracy, all over the place. I'm sure it was uh, all there's over probably. The place. Pe- I mean, Michael Pittman for Tracy in a two. What, what are y'all doing? Mm. You selling low on Pittman? Christian McCaffrey for a one and a Tracy. Like I'll take Christian McCaffrey, Jordan Mason for Tracy in a third. I mean, ah, I still think I'd rather have Mason. I'll take, uh, I'll take Mason. Yeah. Tyron Tracy for Najee in a third. I think I'll take the Najee side. There's a third for Tracy. Sure. I'll give you a third. Tyler mm-hmm. Algier, maybe. Sure. If I don't have Bijan. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm gotta, I got to probably hanging on to Algier if I got Bijan just for the. Uh, oh, for sure. If I have Bijan, you got to hold. Right. Yeah. But Charbonnet Sharps. for Tracy. I mean, it kind of feels like Sharps is the right answer to that question. Yeah, I think so too. Right. 
just a better back in front of him than mm-hmm. Tracy moving forward. That's for the, the argument for Tracy here. 100%. Walker ain't going nowhere outside of energy. Sometimes injury. the move is to not make a move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving here. Let's go Let's go. Jordan Mason, and then we'll end with a quick Tolbert tidbit because I think Big Co wanted to get in on Tolbert. So we've talked about Mason on this program uh, a few times. Beating him up in a good way. You know, I think he's only made an appearance once or twice, so it's not, it's not terrible. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's the, one of the most traded, debated, what to do with kind of players, right? Right. I just made a trade today. I called you and told you what was happening, and you told me you'd be crazy not to take it, which is, you know, yeah, debatable. But I did end up getting a trade done. Mason was offered me for my Ricky Pearsall. And, you know, there's context is, is key, but I have a lot of Ricky Pearsall. And he obviously did get shot. He hadn't done anything in NFL yet, but... This is a which this maybe is a, good for his shoulder. This is a win. It might be the shoulder, reason why right? shoulder hurts yeah. if you think about no, it. You no, know, no, it was bullet messed up. went through there. It was messed it ain't up help it. Yeah. But uh, I got I guess a very it's a win now team. I got a really good team, and I don't have a lot of running back depth at all. And so what I was telling Casey is my thing my my problem with the with especially giving up Pearsall because he's a first round draft pick to the Niners. So that's pretty de- that's a pretty big deal in my book. However. They did end up signing Ayuk, and that was some pretty good Ayuk insurance during the draft. And third and Jawan, Jawan Jennings, mm-hmm. is paid, so he's not going anywhere anytime soon. Two years. I think, exactly. He spent it all on hair dye. You though. know, <laughs> Debo may or may not be back, but at least those two receivers who are, you know, quali- I mean, Ayuk just got paid $70 million guaranteed, so he's going to be there getting targets for a while. And Jawan Jennings is a team and coach favorite, so he's not going to be back, you know, he's not going to throw him down to wide receiver five because Ricky Pearsall shows up. So it could be a slow build for Ricky Pearsall. Mm. I understand why they drafted him. And in the NFL, why don't you want a couple extra good wide receivers? I don't I don't hate anything that the Niners yeah, have done had, there. They haven't right. really had the depth. There. Exactly. So, so which, I mean, Dewan Jennings wasn't depth until he created it himself. Mm. Like he built his – he worked his way up. Good for him. I'm happy for him. So a win now team. If I'm not a win now team, I think I'd rather have Ricky Pearsall long term than, than Mason. But short term, and on a win now team, and like I'm as in win now, as in like I'm I'm going to be first in win loss, and I'm going to be first in points scored. So like I, the definition of a win now team, sure. like I'm literally going for it. I'm going to be first and the most points scored. So like I got to date, I got the best team in the league. I don't have the deepest team in the league. Casey's team is better than mine depth wise easily, but my team has performed, and I haven't gotten into bye weeks yet, and I haven't dealt with much injury. So my starting lineup is crushing it. Back and throwing Mason on my team was something that I was interested in. Do I give up? But my problem was, all right, what happens if Christian McCaffrey comes back in two weeks? And now that I just give away a first round draft pick wide receiver to the Niners, a great system with a really good quarterback, young quarterback who's going to be here for a backup running back. That was the problem. And yeah. Casey said, well, I would do that all day. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, if I'm, well, we, we've talked about it, uh, you and I, and maybe on the show as well. Like, for what Jordan Mason's giving you right now, there's no, you know, you, there's no better deal on the market if you're winning, right? If you're a good team to trade for Jordan Mason and get the potential points in your lineup. Yep. And to me, it's looking more and more like you're gonna probably get those points for the rest of the season. Like, I don't know if we're gonna see Christian McCaffrey at all this season. You know, mm-hmm. I just, I, I really don't. And and you know, and if you do see Christian McCaffrey, how much? Like, you, I just can't imagine he comes back and they're like, here you go, Bo. Whole whole backfield's yours. Yeah. Like I think Jordan Mason still runs this backfield a little bit, and they try to ramp up and save Christian McCaffrey. Now you get into the playoffs, all bets are off. Do sure. whatever you want with Christian McCaffrey. Sure. But I just, from the Niners' perspective, like I just, I can't see. You had Christian McCaffrey with a, a a calf all last back half of last season that was nagging, and he seemed to be able to kind of get through. And then this season it, it came back, and we were about to start, and then all of a sudden it's like. Here's that calf again, and then yeah. it's like, oh shit! No, there's a real problem here. No, now now it's both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, you know, and I don't I don't know what the plight of Christian McCaffrey is, but all I know is Jordan Mason is is one of the best deals out there. Sure, I mean it sucks to to if I if I've tried to try I tried to trade you in another league, Jordan Mason for Ricky Pearsall, try to get a pick out of it as well. You're but, always trying to get that a little bit extra. Uh, it cost you, but well, I got a I got a two for Mason. So not for me, no. 
Uh, but uh, you know that's that's fine. I would love to get a little more for Mason, but well, I understand league, the I could, theory. I, I can't win the championship. That's why I don't. I didn't right. buy Mason because I can't win a championship in that league. It's it's all it's all. That's why I always right. say it's it's team by team, and that that's exactly the practice. Do I want Mason in that league? You sent me yeah, absolutely, but I can't win. There's three studded out teams. I got a decent team. I'm a pretender. Right. I'm not a contender. I know that. Does Mason help me a little bit? For sure. But I didn't want to. There's no reason to hurt my draft pick if I can't win. Might yeah. as well get in that bottom yeah, and I'm six. Gonna, I'm going to complete rebuild. So I, I I love I love what Jordan Mason can give you week after week. And I think I think you're pretty much going to get a starter out of Mason for most of the season. And even if it, you know, tones down a little bit, we don't know what the plight of McCaffrey is after this season. And that could be Jordan Mason's backfield kind of moving forward. And as things evolve and Jordan Mason's been great. I mean, he fumbled this week and, and it was a bummer. Uh, but if he doesn't fumble, that could have been a touchdown, you know? Right. Well, that's what – maybe that actual run wasn't going to be a touchdown because it wasn't. But the next – maybe two plays later, he falls into the end zone. And now it's a completely yeah. different looking uh, game, so, you know, a point score log and the narrative, oh, well, he, he had a terrible fumble. Of course, that's what happens. And we, we – I because I keep touching on Mason because I just think it's really interesting. And for me, he's just like such a – fairly cheap trade that you can make to give you a high output of points in the running back position that's really hard to get a high hard output of points yeah and you know well, and and, and it, the unknown hurts the value on on each side a little bit and it, it hurts you from really getting a whole lot for for somebody as mason unless you're the cmc owner and once he's out then you're going to the rest of the league going you know you're just trying to get kind of what you can get because this the ride could end at any point and and if you're a rebuilder then you could sell it but i've just the more and more this goes on and the longer and longer this gets with Christian McCaffrey and the weirder, weirder it seems to get. And they're like, Oh, he's ramping up. There hasn't really been any injuries. I guess that's great. But like, I don't know, this just doesn't seem like something that all of a sudden, you know, you're going to come back in and be, and be your regular Christian McCaffrey role. I think that would be crazy for San Francisco to do. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think you, you almost said it right there. It's like the, uh, if Christian McCaffrey was definitely not coming back, you're not getting him for what you're getting Mason for now. Right. You know, so like that's, he's, He's his value is depressed a little bit because Christian McCaffrey. They just said he might not come back next week. Well, that leads you to believe he's coming back the week after or or soon. Right. You know, they some boy said November. Right. So there you go. So um, that's a you know, there's there's four more weeks. Yeah. Right. Um. And you know, like you said, if if he comes, if McCaffrey comes back, steps on the field, plays three drives, and then limps off, Mason's worth the first. Yeah. You know. Um. And you know, so I. I I took the chance. I made it happen. It, it happened, you know, from team to team. It's, you know, yeah. uh, you, may, you might be a buyer, you might be a seller, you might be holding. And that's, that's what we talk about right. all the time. And that's why I wanted to bring that trade up. Because Situational. The, the beauty of that trade was it was the exact opposite trade if you sent me in the other league. Mm -hmm. And why, on one hand, I didn't want your trade and I made the exact same trade in another league. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. You, you brought up the, the Niners a little bit and I just... We're not the yak's not there for the San Francisco right now. It seems like maybe we're I don't want to say there's a fundamental and I'm not dug into anything. I don't know anything, but like it seems like maybe a little bit of a fundamental shift of the offense that they're running Brock's a lot more. Obviously they're gonna, you know, they can they could do the Niners are gonna scheme well regardless, but just seems like maybe they're ushering in a different era of an offense here potentially when you do have to lose Debo and then maybe Ricky comes in and this is a little bit more of a of uh you know different Debo. niners offense that yeah. you know Debo's the the engine that runs that offense to me yeah right? i think so i would rather go you get Ayuk, you get pearsall you get maybe a cowing in there in the slot which they're they're a big two tight end team you see, so when's the bye week jay is it way, ways out i sit in that game lock right there can you scroll down and see it for mason because nine yeah that's a long way away you There's, ain't seeing christian mccaffrey don't fucking well the bye week i bring that up based on what your comment there was was just it could be nothing, but well, it's interesting. The win loss for the for the Niners should. I would rather just look in right now. I'd be playing in cold turkey. If Debo's out, we'll have to change something. But right now, we need to go back to what matters because we've lost two winnable games two weeks in a row, where you should have beat the Rams and you should have beat the Cardinals. You had them both beat. You had to step on their neck and you didn't. So yeah, and I, Hawks, you know, Chiefs, it, and Dallas coming up. You didn't want to see that. Not after winning the last two. Should have won Tampa the last two. Tampa Bay, Seattle, Green Bay, Buffalo. Up by 10 on both of those last two losses, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So should have just stepped on their necks instead. I mean, this last game, both games, you had some terrible shit happen to lose the game. I'm it was not, just it's a, the NFL, you know, though. I, I get unfortunate, it. Uh, you know, you lose a kicker. Yeah. You know, you, you get a, a terrible 
Ronnie Bell drops one in the in the Rams game that'll put the game away. A, a Jordan Mason, Jordan Mason fumbled. fumbled exactly. You get uh, you know uh, the the punt coverage is awful on on the Ram. Basically, the only thing you can't do is let the Rams go down the field. You know, mm-hmm. just a lot a lot of things ain't working for the Niners right now, and and w- we shall see. But anyway, let's let's get out of here. Oh, you want a little Tolbert action before we go? You want you got anything to say on Tolbert? Because it's it's interesting, and this is a, again, we patience has been the last show. <laughs> was patience dead. has been this show. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm sure there's, again, a million people who are just telling you to sell, well, sell, sell. I've just been a, I've just been a Dak guy for a long time, and he plays with volume, and he always has. He's, and it's gotten better and better each year, and especially this year, they got no running back really to speak of. And so Brandon Cook goes on the IR. That's all you need to know. That's And teams are triple covering CeeDee Lamb. Right. Jalen Tolbert is about to do work. He just went out and did work on the road at Pittsburgh. And because Pittsburgh comes at you and triple covers CD and Jalen Tolbert, I mean, Dak's not a, not an idiot. He like, look at this guy over here with so much room to spare. And then my, my main man over here has four guys chasing him around. Let me throw it over here to Tolbert. Yeah. And, and it, now and Dak saying his praise, praises in the off season, he was making some big leaps. They're all making big leaps until they come out there and do something, right? Yeah. Everybody's everybody's well, the always big getting thing better. was that he spent the most time with him in the with, off season. With him, whoever he spent the most time in the off season usually has the big big come up in the la- in the yeah. next year. Uh, but Tolbert's probably pretty. Obviously, he just had a really good game, and the week before actually was you know he's actually been pretty. Decent he's been he's been for, working. He's been working for, uh, some of the season here. But uh, you know this is just I just feel like I feel this we're just getting hit with practice and patience right now mm-hmm. seems to be just really paying dividends and again it's not about not being active active is active and patience on players are two totally different things yep right you can uh, then it's not that i wouldn't ever trade tolbert on my team if i had him and i could it was interesting and it was getting a deal done and you know you lost the value because tolbert's you know whatever yeah um but you know i got teams where tolbert's just just been chilling yeah. For a while I, down there. If you active active versus having patience, right? If you want to be active and you want to be in there digging and trying to find that teammate or the the league mate or the other manager that wants to make a trade and, and you and your values line up and you can make and you make something happen. If you want to be digging for that margin, I was in college of Charleston, it was an entrepreneurship program and the, one of the wealthiest guys in Charleston put this program on and I'm sitting in that class, very small class, invite only, and he goes we ain't talking about butter. We talking about margin. And I've always remembered that. It's great. But like, the, <laughs> and, he, this, and he's older at this point. He's really old now. Still kicking. But he's, he's older at this point. We ain't talking about butter. We talking about margin. If you ain't getting margin, you losing. And so if you want to be highly active and you want to be digging in around there for your margin, go digging for your margin. But don't come out here, you know, sell and take Bigsby for a third because he was dead last year. Mm. And don't come out here selling Jordan Whittington off your team because you got maybe you didn't know who he was and you picked him up in the late fourth round of a rookie draft. you know, Or maybe you picked him up off of waivers because Casey told you to and you're like, oh, whatever, I can get yeah. a fourth round pick for him right now. You know, d- Be active, but don't be silly with it. Yeah. I mean, you could say, hey, tra- trade Tank Bigsby the, the previous year when he wasn't doing anything and you paid, you know, a three, if you can get a three or a four or whatever back, you, you know, you do it. Then you go buy the dip again on on tank, and it's like that's fucking way easier said than done. Way easier said than done. He just I'm gonna nobody, you know, I'm gonna buy the dip on the big guys when people are panicking about them. Exactly. You know, that's it's just those those lower level guys. It gets kind of hard to to be. You might have. You don't been. have enough. You don't have low enough draft picks sometimes to really facilitate. Like I really want that guy, but I kind of have to build a deal. I'm not just gonna give you a third. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Tolbert, send some offers, see if you can grab him. Cooks is going to miss some time. I think he's going to ride into this wide receiver two for the Cowboys here and be locked and loaded for the foreseeable future. Obviously, Ferguson uh, is pretty good, but Ferguson. Tolbert seems like he's coming right around. He's got juice. He's got some size. He's got well, some speed. If he expands a little bit, Cooks now might not come in and take a spot. Right. Now he could. He could. You know, Cooks is out. They got a void. They got voidable years on Cooks deal right here, like Fugazi parts of Cooks deal basically coming up on these next years. So, you know, Cook could. I'm not saying well throw be, Cooks to the street. I'm, I'm just d- saying. I'm, if, no, I'm saying for the Cowboys, they the, can they can they can make that swap pretty but easily. But but even even still, like the Cowboys, they don't have enough depth in any position to go losing guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. saying, like you can you can make Cooks your three, and Tolbert can be your two. You don't have to just go say, hey, we can get out from you know Cooks. 
Cowboys have been yeah. mismanaged for a while. Now. I'm just saying that they can, and he yeah. could not be on the team anymore, and somebody else could be in there. Mm -hmm. And and you know, I, Tolbert future's looking bright there. Romeo Dobbs in a three for Tolbert. There is that what that says? Round three for Tolbert. Yeah, there's Whittington. Whittington. Whittington or Tolbert. Mm. There's your boy right there. That's a good trade. That is a good trade. Definitely the third. Jameson Williams for Tolbert in the nah, first. I'm keeping Jameson Williams. Dumb. Yeah, Dubs for third and Tolbert. I've got to keep Dubs. That's. I'll take Tolbert. Oh, there we go. There we go. Give me Dubs. Dubs is disgruntled. <laughs> <laughs> Getting suspended. Yeah, what happened there? Doesn't like his role. Didn't show up to practice. Hates it. Oh, Had to do geez. a wellness check. Get well, rid of not, him. Get Tolbert. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've we're it's way too late for us. Jason's sleepy. We're sleepy. We got to talking before we started, and and things got off the rails. Idiots. All right, appreciate you guys. We'll be back next week. Be sure to lock it in. Subscribe, like, five star review. Uh, we're gonna start doing five star reviews for T-shirt contest here next month. Boom! Ooh, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> so much fun. So much fun. Uh, I saw a few more come in through the iTunes, uh, so good job. Appreciate yeah, still you. not nearly enough. But appreciate you guys. We need we need them five stars. It really helps us out. It, I, honestly, like it, it, no no bullshit. The five stars are huge for us. If you haven't done it, do it. You don't have to write a review anymore. You just can just tap click it. the buttons. Uh, Too good for your home. Subscribe on the tubes if you haven't. Makes it just a little easier for you. It doesn't do all that much for us, but it, it, you know. Hit I'll that like, it. hit that like button, like, leave a comment. You know, tell us what you're trading these guys. Are hurricanes man made? You, like. you know, I don't know. What what uh, yeah. what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Hit Who us knows? in the comments. Who knows? But uh, you can hit us up on the Discord. You got a free Discord. There's a five dollar holler. You get an extra episode every week. Right now, we'll be having rankings uh, updated up there soon. Um, we appreciate you. We'll catch you next time. Peace.